morning all it's uh wednesday the 25th of september um and uh when i spoke to you on monday it was just starting to rain it hasn't really stopped properly and you can see because i'm a lazy bugger i left the wheelbarrow out there must be four inches of water in there um we've had a lot of rain anyway what i wanted to talk about today uh was something that's come up in the last few days and it keeps cropping up on twitter and other places and that's about poultry and rats now i need to just qualify what i'm going to say by telling you a bit about my past uh, through most of my life i've had a bit of a passion for killing rats and the result of that passion was that i spent 30 years in the pest control industry dealing with rat problems uh, for in it going in terms of scale from people's gardens particularly people who feed birds and keep poultry um, to the Houses of Parliament yes I used to do the Houses of Parliament um, anyway this question keeps arising because poultry keeping has got very popular in the last decade or so I suppose and I used to keep a lot of poultry uh, in this area of the garden I used to keep ooh, between anywhere between 40 and 60 big utility breeds of poultry and also when we were at the farm uh, we had 300 plus laying birds I've had a bit of rum rummage around this morning because uh, I need to clear up this area this is old poultry housing as you probably know from a previous video I am planning on keeping poultry again but uh, we'll get on to that another day um, I've been in there and got a few bits and pieces out you can see it's all a bit of a mess the old poultry housing's had it uh, the reason I stopped keeping poultry was that um, I started to work on large-scale poultry units uh, ranging in size from uh, smallish organic free-range units to large battery houses with 50,000 birds in and for biosecurity reasons they don't like you to have poultry at home uh, quite obvious when you really break down and think about it but for us heartbreakingly in some ways it meant that we could no longer keep poultry um, those days are over I'm gonna start keeping poultry again very soon <coughs> but in the meantime I thought I'd just talk about rats and there's three things that cause rat infestations and we'll deal with each of those three things uh, one at a time and I'll start with the easiest to deal with and work our way up to the most difficult so here we go I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet rats need a lot of water and it's the one thing that people often forget about each rat needs at least 60 millilitres of water every day to survive that's more water than most people expect Go and get a glass and put 60 millilitres of water in it and you will realise how much water that actually is. Hens don't need water at night. They're asleep. They're roosting happily, comfortably in their expensive housing that you've brought, bought them. You leave water outside in the run at night and you will end up with rats, regardless of everything else, because water is as much of a draw to rats as food. There's a simple cure for this. What you do is at night you pick up your water drinker you pour the water out and you turn it upside down like that job done next morning you come down to let your birds out this is presuming that you haven't got those very nice and expensive automatic door openers you come down to let your birds out pick up your water container fill it with fresh water bob's your uncle you have denied rats water overnight you have made sure that your hens have fresh water first thing in the morning these, this is a really simple and easy thing to do. I've worked on commercial units in the past where the um, downpipes have blocked and they've ended up with pools of water at the corner of each building. That was enough to draw rats into the, to the chickens. So water is the first and one of the easiest things to deal with. Okay, next thing on our list is food. And there's two different aspects of food. The first is storing food and the second is feeding itself. In terms of storing food, a bin like this is ideal to keep your food safe from rats and mice and squirrels. Actually it isn't ideal because it's polypropylene or it's a plastic and this is very easy for rats and mice and squirrels to chew into. You are better off paying that little bit extra money and buying a galvanised bin with a good lid that you can put a weight on to secure the lid. And what that'll do is not only will it stop the rats from actually getting into the food, it'll also help to stop the smell of the food coming out for rats to smell and therefore to attract them to your poultry. 
The second aspect is feeding itself. A lot of people feed ad lib with a hopper like that, which is great because what it does is it maintains your hen's health, generally speaking. They can eat as much or as little food as they want to eat. If you do that, at night when you shut your birds in, take your feeder, take the lid off it, pour the food back into your bin, and again, turn it upside down and leave it overnight. The next morning you can put as much fresh food in there as you want to, and what it means is that you won't end up with damp, moldy food at the bottom of your hopper. And most importantly of all, it means you won't have food sat outside to attract rats overnight. If you feed on the ground, if you do ad-lib feeding, perhaps a few handfuls of corn every afternoon, which is great, it's exactly what we used to do. We always used to feed a little bit of corn in the afternoons to keep the birds happy, they loved it. It also gave us a bit of a connection with them in the afternoons and drew them back into their housing or towards their housing. That's great. If when you shut your birds in, there's still food on the ground, that means you're feeding them too much. So cut that food back. Keep them a little bit keen in the afternoons, then in the morning when they come out, they'll eat their layers pellets, and they'll be happy, and there'll be no food on the ground for, to attract rats in. Okay, the next thing on the list is probably the most difficult thing to deal with. So we'll move on to that next. Okay, the third and final thing on the list is harbourage. Now, harbourage is a pest control term for areas where rats can hide from predators and nest and feed in relative safety. It's a term that we've used for decades, actually, um, to describe those areas. As you can see here, there's a lot of rat harbourage right in front of me now in this area where we used to keep poultry. And if my plans come to fruition to keep poultry behind me on the other side of the hedge, um, this area has got to be cleaned up because at the moment this is a massive draw for rats on its own before I start adding in food and water and hens. So why is harbourage so important? Well harbourage is important because rats are totally paranoid. Um, for thousands of years rats have been predated by nearly every animal that eats meat on, on, in this country. So the result of that is that they need to feel safe. They need to feel safe in moving from A to B. They need to feel safe when they're sleeping and resting. They need to feel safe when they're, when they're producing their young and they need to feel safe when they are feeding. Now, you can do things to reduce the likelihood of rat infestation quite simply and easily. The first thing is to reduce the amount of clutter that you've got knocking around, as I've already said. Um, the second thing is to keep things moving around. Rats are neophobic. That means they have a fear of new objects. They don't like their environment changing. They've got a very acute kinesthetic memory. Now, for, if you don't know what kinesthetic memory is, kinesthetic memory is the ability, it's a muscle memory. It's the ability for us as humans, when we wake up in the middle of the night and it's pitch black, to be able to stand up and turn on a light or to reach over and turn on a bedside light. We remember where, and our muscles remember, where the light switches are. Rats have got a, a very heightened sense of kinesthetic memory. Their muscles remember escape routes, effectively. So if, you, if their environment is changing, they don't get the chance to really establish that kinesthetic memory in their territory. So keeping things moving around is very important. Reducing clutter is very important. You are reducing what we call in the trade harborage. Very, very important. If you want rats, get a pile of old crap like this, get some old pallets, chuck it down, introduce some food and water and some hens, and you will have rats in no time at all, I guarantee it. Rats will obviously take the food that you are trying to feed to your birds, um, but also rats are carnivores. Well, they're not, they're omnivores. They will kill your birds. They will kill your birds and eat them. If you don't believe me, talk to people that have kept poultry for a long time. It is absolutely true. So if the worst happens and you get rats, and I'm not intending on covering how to control rats on this film at all. This is about lessening the chances of becoming infested with rats. But if you do have rats, um, please do something to control them, but do not routinely use rat baits, rodenticides, poison, whatever you want to call it. Um, keeping it down permanently has a massive detrimental effect on the wider environment. There's nothing wrong with using rodenticide baits correctly and properly to deal with rat infestations. There is a massive problem with chucking a bit of bait down and keeping it down permanently. Your best option is to put down some killing traps, 
that are there and constantly working 24-7, 365 days a year to pick up rats when they arrive before they have time to become established on your holding. I'm not going to cover that at all. I know that there are some really good people on YouTube, um, like English Country Life, who, who are going to cover predation of chickens and they're going to talk about controlling rats. If you have got rats and you want advice, please feel free to make some comments under this, this, this film and I'll do my best to help you. I will, if it's what people want, cover at some point a little bit more on rat control. But in terms of minimising the chances of infestation around your birds, this is as far as we go today. Anyway, it's been a joy to talk about a subject that I really do know something about. Um, catch you all again another time. Ta-ta for now.